Welcome back to the RU Recovery Program Transformation Tuesday broadcast. I'm so thankful again that you've tuned in this evening. Looking forward to having a wonderful time with you. And I uh, hope you got your Bible ready. I hope you got a pen, piece of paper ready. And uh, we're we've been looking at over the last several weeks the 10 pillars of the RU Recovery Program. Uh, the 10 pillars. And we have made it all the way up to pillar number eight. So we just have two more to go. We're going to look at pillar eight tonight together. If you'll take out your Bible and open it, please, to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we'll be looking at just one verse there, 1 Thessalonians 5, just one verse. I hope you're having a great week. Again, I thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to tune in this evening. I pray that this will be an encouragement to you. Again, we want to invite you to come out on a Friday evening, 7 p.m., and uh, join in with us at the RU Recovery Program here on our campus at South Haven Baptist Church. We'd love to have you come be a part, and I promise you, you'll be encouraged. As you're turning there to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I just want to share with you tonight what I believe is the most important truth found in the Word of God. I will be sharing and reading Bible that I would, uh, that, uh, excuse me, let me back up. I will be reading and sharing more Bible than I normally would on a regular basis for this broadcast. I just want you to jot down, if you can, please, the Bible references. And uh, I'll read them, of course, but I want you to jot down the references. So you can go back later and, and make sure I'm right, but then also go back later uh, for your own self and, and read and reread those verses and study them and memorize them and meditate upon them. But I want to help someone tonight that's watching that has never heard of the wonderful saving grace of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, you're there now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The Bible says in verse 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe here at South Haven and the RU Recovery Program that our spirit is the operating agent by which God's spirit speaks to us. We connect to his divine direction through intuitively filter all of life's decisions. Nothing happens to you, nothing happens to me that doesn't first go through the filter of God's will for our life. Man was created in God's image and likeness. We see this in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Man was created with God's supreme attributes. What are those? Well, his holiness and his righteousness, meaning that he is pure, he is without sin, and he is morally perfect. And God created man that way. The benefits of being righteous are simply this, that we could have eternal life with God forever. And then secondly, we could fellowship with God forever. We're created in God's image and likeness basically means that man was created to function as a trichotomy, a three-part being. Just as God is a triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, that's his body, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, that's God's Spirit. And man became a living soul. Get this, body, soul, and spirit, a trichotomy. The spirit of man is that part of man that communicates and fellowships with God. That relationship and fellowship was severed in the garden. God gave man one commandment, one, one do not, if you will, and, and man disobeyed God's commandment. And he plunged man into sin when he disobeyed the Lord. The results of the sin are this, the loss of righteousness and now the loss of eternal life. Death passed upon all man and all creation. What do I mean by death tonight? Well, first of all, when the Bible speaks of death, it speaks of a physical, literal death. We will stop breathing. We, our hearts will stop beating. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. Now, the Bible talks about death. It doesn't talk about annihilation. When the Bible talks about death, it talks about separation from the body 
and separation from God for all eternity. Secondly, the Bible speaks of death. It speaks of the second death. This is the ultimate judgment for sin. It's a spiritual death. It's eternal torture and punishment because of sin. And then thirdly, there's the loss of fellowship. We see that in Genesis chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. Let me back up just a moment to the second death. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, verses 6 and verse 14, that death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And again, in Revelation 21, verse 8, those who were not written in the Lamb's book of life were cast into the lake of fire. This is God's ultimate destination for the soul that sinneth and has never received Christ as their Savior. Again, going back to number three, the loss of fellowship. No longer could man fellowship with God. Sin had separated Adam and Eve from God Almighty. God placed them outside the garden, and God made sure that he, that he separated himself from sin. You know, tonight, God will not have anything to do with sin. There is no sin in heaven at this very moment. And there'll never be sin in heaven. Why? Because God is holy and God is righteous. When you and I were born, we were born sinners. We were born with a dead spirit. Listen, we could not communicate with God. We were born condemned to die. We were born separated from God, destined to spend an eternity in the lake of fire. You say, Brother Johnny, hold on a minute. That's terrible news. I thought this was a positive, encouraging broadcast of Transformation Tuesday. Oh, just listen. I have wonderful news for you tonight. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verses 8 to 12, But God commendeth, that means He proved, He showed. God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by His blood... We shall be saved from the wrath through Him. That's condemnation. That's separation from God. We, we shall be saved from that wrath. Verse 10, For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Wherefore, in verse 12, as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. You know the verse, John 3, 16. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. That's that wrath. That's that condemnation but shall have eternal life. You know, there's a great story in John chapter 3 and verse 3 where Jesus is speaking in John chapter 3 to a man by the name of Nicodemus. Jesus answered and said unto Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. You ever heard that phrase, born again? Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus must have been up in age. How can a man go back to his mother's womb and be born the second time? In verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, get this, Except a man be born of water, that's your physical birth, and of the Spirit, that's a spiritual birth. He cannot, listen, he says it again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And then Jesus says this in verse 7 of John 3, Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Now if you're watching the broadcast tonight, you have experienced a physical or water birth. If you haven't, then you're not alive. You just think you are tonight, okay? Uh, but every one of us have experienced the physical water birth. That's how we got here, okay? But tonight I ask you the question, have you received the spiritual birth? Have you been born again? Again, the Bible says in John three sixteen, For God so loved the world, 
that he did what? He gave, he gave up, if you will, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Most of the time we stop right there when we're reading. But verse 17 says this, For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, listen, through him might be saved. Verse 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You know, tonight you can simply pray right where you are. You can call on the Lord Jesus Christ to save you at this very moment. I ask you, have you been born again? Ask Jesus to save you now. And for those of us tonight who have by faith, Receive Jesus Christ, we have been born again. Our spirit has been made alive. Hallelujah. You say, where did you get that, Brother Johnny? Well, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5, jot those references down, listen to these wonderful verses. And you hath he quickened, who were dead. In other words, he has quickened, he has made alive, if you will. I, I remember when I was a kid, I used to bite my nails a lot and and, uh, and I would bite them, and, and I'd bite them so badly that the blood would come out. And, and my grandmother would say, would you please quit biting your nails? And, I, and I'd say, why? She'd say, you're biting them to the quick. In other words, you're making them alive. The blood is coming out, and, and your nails are bleeding, and that's not good for you. And, and here's the thing. You had to quicken. Jesus has quickened us. He has made us alive. Who were dead. Praise God, we're not anymore. Spirit was dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein, in time past, this is who we used to be. Ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, speaking of the devil, among whom also we all, okay, we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, made alive our spirit, okay, together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Aren't those wonderful verses tonight? I hope you know Jesus as your Savior. Let me read these last verses with you. Romans chapter 8, verses 9 to 17. Jot that reference down, if you will. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. You remember last week we talked about that. The Holy Spirit, not only does He dwell with us, but He dwells in us. He convicts us of sin. He corrects us in the areas that we need to be corrected in, and then He helps us to get it right. You know, the Bible says if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just, to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When the Holy Spirit convicts, we have a commandment to obey the Lord and confess. Now, if any man, going on in our verse, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, get this tonight, he is none of his. God knows who belongs to Him. The devil knows who belongs to Him. The ver verse 10 says, And if Christ be in you, the Spirit of Christ, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, verse 10, but the Spirit is, listen, life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, it was the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the tomb. Isn't that wonderful? That same Spirit dwells in the life of the believer tonight who has trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die, right? That's what the Bible says. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. In other words, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
Verse 14 of Romans 8. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Listen, they are the sons of God. Do you feel the leading of the Lord in your life tonight? That's great evidence that you've been saved. That's a great evidence that you've been born again. Verse 15, For if ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. In other words, we call God our Daddy, Daddy. You have received the spirit of adoption. You have been adopted into God's family. That's why we call each other brother and sister, because we're part of His family. The Spirit itself, verse 16, beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we have suffered with Him, that we may be also glorified together. Let me say this tonight. Years ago, I used to listen to some terrible music. And I'm not proud of that. I'm ashamed of that. But I used to listen to some really bad music. And I was influenced greatly by that music uh, and much of what my lifestyle had become and the things that I had become involved with and the people I had become involved with, uh, my friends and others that I would run with, uh, it really was influenced heavily by the music that we listened to. That was something that we had in common. But after I got saved, something began to change. I remember sitting in the church and, and I remember a gentleman got up to sing and he was playing the guitar and and I had heard Christian songs before I was saved and church songs before I was saved. And I'll just tell you tonight, I thought they were the most boring things in the world. I, I didn't understand the words. The music was just so slow and, and a, a piano, an organ, a, a, an acoustic guitar. I just thought, man, that is so boring. They need some drums. They need to liven up this place. And, and that's what I used to think. That's who I used to be apart from Christ. But I remember sitting in church, about 45 people in the auditorium, and this gentleman got up to sing, and he was singing, I'm telling you, he was singing straight from the heart. It was almost as if the Lord had, was standing right there with him. And the Lord was helping him to, to belt out those tunes, those songs, those words. The Lord was helping him to play that guitar. And it was almost like at the same moment as I was listening to that song and listening to that music, that all of a sudden something wet started to fall out of my eyeballs. I, I thought, what in the world is this, you know? And and I had never cried in any worldly music, and here I was crying to the music of our Lord. You know what was happening? The Holy Spirit that had come in to live within me at the moment that I trusted Christ as my Savior. You know what He was doing within me at the moment I was listening to that music? He was saying, Johnny, I like that music. You know what? That music talks about me. That, that music talks of, of Jesus Christ and of the, of the Father. And, and I, I love that music. I enjoy that. And it was at that moment I, I just remember, Lord, you're pleased when I listen to right music. You're pleased when I listen to good music. You know, the following week, this is a true story, okay? I wouldn't lie to you. A uh, true story. The next week, I came to my church. It's my former church before I came here to South Haven. And I brought two huge trash bags filled with CDs of music, filled with DVDs and VHS tapes. Okay, that's how long ago it was. VHS tapes of movies and different things that I knew influenced my life for the world and influenced my life of who I used to be apart from Christ. And I brought them in the back of my truck and I, and I, I couldn't wait to tell my pastor, hey, I got all my music, my movies and everything, and I want to throw it in the trash. I'm going to get rid of it. And, and I said, will you help me? And, and I remember him saying, no, I'm not going to help you. You can do it yourself, you know. That's all your music. That's your trash. Go get rid of it. And I went out there next to that dumpster and I, I mean, I just felt so great, you know, and, and uh, picked up those bags and threw them in that dumpster and, and slid that door back closed and and uh, I just remember the relief, the burden was lifted off of me that no longer did I have something in my possession that would be against God and that would not help me grow in my relationship with Him. I turned a corner, I'm just telling you, this is me personally, I turned a corner that night in my music and in my desire for the things of God. And much has changed. I want to daily listen daily desire a fresh awareness of the Holy Spirit's presence in my life. So it matters what kind of music I listen to. 
It matters uh, what kind of TV shows or movies that I may be watching. He gives us all true joy and true peace. And when the Lord is near, listen, when the Lord is near, I need not worry, I need not fear. I didn't write that, I didn't make that up. That just happened upon my pen there, okay? He does not allow anything to happen to us tonight that is not first passed through God's filtering system for our life. I ask you again, have you repented and asked the Lord to forgive your sins? Have you been born again? Again, Jesus said, you must, you must, say it with me, you must be born again to enter in to the kingdom of God. He clearly emphasized this fact. Listen, to a man who knew the Bible, okay? He knew the Old Testament scriptures. Stop trusting in something other than God. Start trusting in someone, and that someone is Jesus Christ by faith tonight. Again, we looked at pillar number eight. Mankind was created to function in the divine order of spirit, soul, and body. When we're allowing the Lord to influence our spirit, our spirit will influence our soul. That's our mind, our emotions, our will. And then our, our soul will influence our body to carry out God's will, His purpose, and His plan for your life and for my life. I thank you again tonight for watching and joining in to the broadcast of the RU Recovery Transformation Tuesday. I hope you were encouraged. I hope you were able to get down those Bible references. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you for tuning in. Have a blessed evening.